My name is Joe Cleaver. For 14 years, I've been partnered with the man on my left here, Bill Bundy. We never had a secret from each other until now. This good-looking kid on my right, a rookie cop called Haven, he's the secret. He looks human, talks and acts human, but he's not. He's an android, a robot, the perfect cop, the cop of the future, a future cop. Ta-da! Uh, there is a 61% probability, therefore, the location is Santa Monica Municipal. How could he know all of that? Man, that's the fastest white boy I've ever seen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> How's he doing? For the world's first android policeman, he's doing just fine. You ready to go to work, kid? Ready, sir. <laughs> oh, boy. He's on a 15-hour energy cycle, but I really wouldn't go past 12. Huh. Ta-da! You're looking quite handsome this morning, sir. Thanks, kid. He don't need glasses. See you tonight, ma'am. Have a good day, Haven. Mr. Cleaver, I don't have to remind you, what we're doing here is only between us and the captain. Madam, you have my word on it. Thank you. See you later. Okay. Hello, partner. How you doing, Joe? Not too bad. Hey, rookie, get it back. Oh, yes, sir. Kid, when are you going to remember? I sit in the front. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. My programming must have suffered a memory malfunction. Memory what? Yeah, it's that new rookie school. Yeah, he's a rookie, all right. And a weird one, too. Sonny, aren't you ashamed? And on a Sunday, too. Oh, why aren't you in church? <sighs> Come on.
Freeze. What is this? Put the stuff on the desk. Get out of here. On the desk. Bailed you out again, huh, partner? <clears throat> Herbert Conroy, that you? Yes, and this place is mine. You're trespassing. And you're under arrest for threatening a police officer. Oh, wait a minute. How's I supposed to know he's a police officer? For one thing, the uniform he's wearing. Oh, come on. Anybody can wear a uniform. Yeah, but they don't have that extra special whatever it takes to be a police officer which is why you should have known he was the real McCoy. Let's go. Wait a minute. He hid something in the floor safe. Oh? Uh -huh. It looked like dope. Open it. Are you kidding? Open it, please. Get a warrant. Oh, don't worry. We will. All right, take him out, kid. Hmm. Hey, I hope you appreciate what I said about you having that extra special whatever it takes, huh? Oh, you know I do. <laughs> Only wish I could return a compliment. Yeah. Suspect number one was caught by Officer Haven. Excuse me, sir, uh, but according to department procedure, the correct terminology is suspect number one, the above-named juvenile, was apprehended by... Oh, look, kid, this ain't no English composition class. Just write it the way I tell you. Hey, where's Bundy? He was called away. Called away? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, shall I continue, sir? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, suspect number one, the above-named juvenile, was apprehended by officer... Well, come on, write it, will you? The third suspect... The above-named Herbert Conroy was apprehended by Officer... Hey, hey, what do you think you're doing? What does it look like I'm doing? Well, now, it looks like you're getting ready to bake a cake. You just tore up the report. That's what you're doing. You know, for an old man, you're still pretty observant, Cleaver. Oh, yeah? Well, let me tell you something. This old man wants to know what's going on. Just rewrite your report. I'm dropping the charges against Herb Conroy. What? You got him dead to rights for assault with a deadly weapon and on a policeman yet. I can't make it stick. What do you mean you can't make it stick? Of course you can make it stick. Excuse me, sir, but both Officer Cleaver and myself were witnesses to the incident. Yeah. Now, I said I can't make it stick. Now drop it, will you? Hey, honey, give the kid a cup of coffee, will you? Okay. Hey, Freddie, we have the usual, huh? <laughs> ah, thanks. Oh. Bug off, will you, Joe? Why? I didn't say anything. No, but you're gonna. Look, partner. When you put an iron tight collar on a creep like Herb Conroy, you just don't turn around and let him go without a good reason. I already told you the reason. Now leave it alone, will you? Not until you tell me the truth. The truth? The truth is that you're an old biddy who can't keep his nose out of other people's business. All right, all right, that's enough of that. Look, we may have been partner for 14 years, but you just don't talk to me like that. No? No! I know how we can remedy that, Joe. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 
Keep the change. Thanks, Bundy. No, sir. Los Angeles Kings have only a 43.5% probability of reaching the play uh, 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 uh. It's an accepted fact that the incident touching off World War I was the assassination of the Austrian Archbishop. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Couple of bottles of beer and it hits him like a ten ton truck. Yeah, Come on, kid. I'll see you. What's wrong, kid? Time cycle. Time cycle? Why didn't you tell me you were running out of juice? Projected winner of Super Bowl twelve is... Don't you have a, a meter or a gauge? L.A. Rams over L.A. Rams. Six points. <laughs> now, don't you worry. Don't you worry. We're going to get you fixed up, OK? Don't well, hold still now. All right. Don't worry. Ah, don't worry. Easy. boy. All right, come on. In you go. In you go. boy. That's it. One of the central diodes, I've replaced it with a two-amp unit. It shouldn't recur. Ah. Our young man will be as good as new in the morning. Ah, good. Good. <laughs> hey, um, Doc, do you mind if I ask you a question? Mm, of course not. Well, um, when a man acts nasty about something he knows he did wrong, would you call that a defense mechanism? You're not referring to Haven. Oh, no, no, no. Somebody else. Oh, I'm not a psychiatrist. But I would say such behavior could be a form of defense, yes. But would he act that way toward a guy that he's been friends with for a long time? I mean, good friends? It's very likely that's the only way he can act. Hmm. Why? A number of reasons. Shame, guilt, embarrassment, fear. Ah, oh, I see. Hi. You okay now, kid? I guess so. You sure now? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Bundy won't be with us today. He reported in sick. Excuse me, sir, but aren't we scheduled for the Wilshire area this morning? Yep. But first, we're going to visit Herb Conroy. Yes, sir. Don't you want to know why? Well, I already know why, sir. Oh. Well, why? Well, there is an 86% probability that Officer Bundy's illness today is of psychogenic origin, uh, stemming from some personal relationship between him and Mr. Conroy. Uh, you wish to investigate that probability. Hey, that's 100% right, kid. How'd you figure that out? Whenever Mr. Conroy's name was mentioned yesterday, Officer Bundy's pulse rate increased from a normal 62 to an average high of 94.7. What'd you do, hold his hand? Oh, no, sir. I detected his pulse rate with my sensors. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Uh, Sir? Huh? Oh! Yeah, too bad, kid. You don't know what you're missing. Missing what, sir? Hi, honey. Hello. Uh, Mr. Herb Conroy, please. Is he expecting you? I doubt it. Well, without an appointment, I'm afraid that I won't be able to... I'm uh, Claire Hammond, the office manager. Perhaps I can help you. I don't think so. It's a personal matter with Mr. Conroy. Uh, there are two policemen here. Step right this way, won't you? Oh, good to see you again, Officer... Uh... Cleaver, and this is Officer Haven. Right. Now, what can I do for you? Oh, yes. You brought a warrant to look into the safe. Okay. That's not why we're here, sir. No? Well, take a look anyway. What we want to know is, how come my partner dropped those charges against you? 
Yesterday, you were accusing me of stashing all kinds of stuff in here. Today, you won't even take a look inside it. I'll take it outside, then. Excuse me. The charges were dropped for lack of evidence. Didn't he tell you? Yes, he told me. And I don't believe him. You don't believe him. So what am I supposed to do about it? Would you like a drink? You can start by answering my question. Why were those charges dropped? I already did answer it, but it's not what you want to hear. Look, is this visit official? I mean, police business? No, sir. It's personal business. Mine. Claire, the gentlemen are leaving. We'll be talking again, Mr. Conroy. That sounds like a threat. No, sir. A promise. Herb Conroy and that broad, what a parlay. I bet they'll have a good laugh all through lunch. I don't believe the lady will have time for lunch, sir. She's meeting a Carlisle girl arriving on a noon flight from Paris, France. How do you know that? With a telephone call she received. I read her lips. Yes, sir, we're traveling away from Wilshire. We're not going to Wilshire. We're going to Bundy's house. Yes, sir. We're going to take the bull by the horns, you understand? The bull by the horns, you get it? <laughs> no, sir. You see, Bundy's a cop and the cop is a bull, you get it? <laughs> no, sir. Joe. Hello, June. How are you? <laughs> hey, this is Haven. Me and Bill are breaking them in. <laughs> hey, where is that bum? Gone for a walk. Oh? Nice to meet you, Officer Haven. He should be back any minute. Make yourself comfortable. Let me get you something. A nice cup of fresh coffee. I know you'll have one, Joe. Oh, yeah. Hey, June. Yeah? Is this Natalie? She's grown up since you last saw her, hasn't she? She's 20 now. No. Yeah. And with a job that takes her to the most marvelous places. Canada, Europe, South America. Know where she is now? Brazil. Brazil? Rio, Sao Paulo, Recife. She's introducing the Barbara Carlisle line down there. She's due back Wednesday. We'll have you over for dinner. She can tell you all about it. I'll make that lamb stew you're so fond of. You're still fond of it, aren't you, Joe? Joe? There he is. Pull over. Uh, yes, sir. Hey, Bill. Hey, don't bother me, huh, Joe? Come over here, will you? Will you come over here? Now, look. Get in the car, will you? We're going to go down to the airport. There's something I want to check out. What's he talking about? Uh, we're taking the bull by the horns, sir. Huh? Look, there's somebody coming in from Paris. A Carlisle girl. You get it? Come on, get in. Mrs. Hammond met the young lady as soon as they cleared customs. Uh-huh. Hold it. Hold it. Let her go. Sir? 
Ah, she's heading back to the office to deliver that case to Herb Conroy. Hey, where are you going? A car in the next street is traveling 54 miles per hour. That's a 40-mile zone, sir. Hey, how can he see a car in the next street? Are you kidding? I saw him, too. There he is. Go get him, kid. Go get him. That kid got some eyes. You can see through buildings, huh? Yeah, I can also see through stubborn, hard-headed cops. I found out your daughter works for Herb Conroy, Bill. What's the scoop? When I was writing a report, Conroy's lawyer called me outside. Let me know Natalie's coming in Wednesday from Brazil with $250,000 worth of cocaine. <sighs> well, she doesn't know they switched sample cases on her. Think she's bringing back the same one she took in. If I didn't drop charges, Conroy was going to see customs was tipped. Natalie would be nailed with the stuff. And she's innocent, Joe. You know that. Ah, you made a bad deal, partner. And Natalie can still get nailed. It all depends on how thorough those custom boys feel like being that day. Yeah, I know. She's not in the clear until she's free of the airport and turn the sample case over to the good-looking lady boss. Real cute, huh? Yeah, real cute. Those poor girls get caught. Conroy says he knows from nothing. And go prove otherwise. Hey, but listen. If they can switch sample cases, why can't we? Switch what with what? Oh, no wonder you're still riding around in black and whites after 23 years. Look. If there's no cocaine in the sample case that Natalie passes through customs, she's not guilty of any crime. You see? Yeah. We switched the cases before she gets to customs. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you see, you're not so dumb after all. Yeah, but how do we how do we make the switch? Where? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got an idea. Uh, sir, exactly what will my undercover duties entail? We're going to arrange for you to be a baggage handler. Huh? All you got to do is exchange the sample case that we give you for the sample case that's coming through on the conveyor belt. You bring that one to us. Simple. Yes, sir. Uh, but, sir, in situations where it is known beforehand that drugs will be confiscated, department regulations require a narcotics officer present to receive the material. Don't worry, there's going to be one there. As soon as the arrest is made. Uh, what arrest is that, sir? Mrs. Hammond. She'll end up with the sample case you take from the airport, the one with the cocaine. I don't understand, sir. If a narcotics officer is to take receipt of the material, how could it possibly end up in Mrs. Hammond's possession? And when Mrs. Hammond gets nailed, she's going to help us nail Herb Conroy, too? <laughs> the two rats with the same cheese. You betcha. Now, oh, come on, buddy. You and me are going to go find a Barbara Carlyle sample case. I'm sorry, sir. Huh? Your plan is untenable. Untenable? What's he talking about? It's a good plan. Well, yes, sir, it is. But to arrest Mrs. Hammond for possession of these particular drugs, they would have to be planted on her person. And we, as law officers, cannot possibly participate in an operation that so clearly constitutes entrapment. Shh. It ain't what you said at all. I'm afraid it is, sir. That is a pure logic conclusion. Logic? It's all right for Herb Conroy to frame an innocent girl, but it's not all right to frame him? What kind of logic is that? Two wrongs do not make a right, sir. I'm talking about saving my daughter. What's he talking about? But, sir, once Miss Bundy has been cleared, the danger to her is eliminated. What about the people that keep bringing this stuff in? Don't you want to see them get put away? What kind of a human being are you? Ah, uh, Bill, look, look, why don't you take a cab home, huh? Come on, come on. Now, I'm going to have a nice private talk with Haven, huh? Go ahead. I'll see you later, partner. Now, look, kid, 
you're supposed to do whatever I say, right? Yes, sir. Then I'm saying that you follow my orders to a T. But, sir... No buts. That's an order. Yes, sir. Oh, look, Haven. A good cop does go by the book, but he, at the same time, he has to be flexible. I mean, he don't break the rules, but he bends them just a little bit. Sometimes to see justice done, that's the way you have to do it. You see what I mean? Good. So listen, you and me, we're going to go see a couple of movies, because I want you to learn what flexibility really means. Did you get all that, huh? Yes, sir. The way that the great ones did it. You know, people like Clark Gable with that look of his, and, and Humphrey Bogart when he used to say, if you want me, baby, here I am. If not, take <laughs> off. Did you get all that, kid? Huh, did you? Oh, yes, sir. It's all stored in my memory bank. Great, great. Now, what we'll do is go down to the boss lady's place, you understand? Mrs. Hammond? That's right. He's bound to have one of those sample cases laying around. Oh, excuse me, sir, but the probability of Mrs. Hammond voluntarily providing us with a sample case shows a negative overload in my display. Huh? She won't give us the case, sir. No, no, not to us, kid. To you. I'm getting the same reading, sir. Zero plus. Look, you're not supposed to ask her for it. You're supposed to take it without her knowing it. Oh, yes, sir. Ah, that's the spirit. How you doing, babe? I beg your pardon? Uh, you and me can make some very interesting music, lover. Sir, it didn't work. It will, my boy. It will. It better. She lives in apartment 2C. Huh? Now, if you find a sample case, you throw it down to me, understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, look around for any other evidence you think might be valuable. Yes, sir. Okay? in the neighborhood. That's nice. Listen, babe. The other day when I saw you and you looked at me with those gorgeous orbs, I was a goner. And you knew it. <laughs> Is there something I can do for you, officer? Um, how did you find out where I live? The phone company. Oh, I'm not in the book. I said the company, not the book. When a dame's worth going after, she's worth going after. So why don't you slip into something more comfortable while I fix us a drink? Why not? Aren't you supposed to be pounding a beat or something? Well, this is called, uh, public relations. Scotch on the rocks.
right there. Take your time, sweetheart. Sir, I think I may have discovered additional evidence. Should I investigate? Yeah, but hurry it up, will you? Yes, sir. You're not drinking. Drinking dulls the senses, sugar. You're right. Holy jumping, Hannah. Is that the evidence? How much time do you have? To do what? <laughs> You're really something. That's what they all say, kid. Why don't we discuss this in the bedroom? Carry me. Are you injured? <laughs> Report to one Frank Five. Code two. I repeat, code two. Haven, 10 4. You'll have to excuse me, ma'am. What, what? Where are you going? I have to report to my patrol car. Now? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much for your hospitality. <laughs> Anybody here from narcotics? Yeah, Fitzgerald. He's gonna be here. Well, that's good. That guy's so hungry for a collar, he'd arrest his own mother. <laughs> Kid, I really appreciate what you're doing. It's my pleasure, sir. Uh, sir, shall I continue storing Mrs. Hammond's ledgers, or shall I erase them? Mrs. Hammond's ledgers? Oh, well, yeah. He found out that she's been keeping a double set of books. She's been stealing Herb Conroy blind. You keep that stuff, kid. There might be something there for the IRS. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Hey, wait a minute. How did you get a look at her books anyhow? Uh, they were in her safe. Her safe? Uh, I'll explain it to you, Bill. Uh, you go ahead, kid. Uh, what I was trying to say, sir, was... You go ahead to the baggage area, kid. Global Polar Flight. Uh, yes, sir. Non-stop service to London departing. No, no. You see, um... Look, uh, I told him that he can't go by the book all the time. That he's got to be a little bit more flexible. You understand what I mean? So he cracks safes. So he's young.
are you doing over there? You on vacation or something? The work's over here. It's be a relative. <laughs> Nothing to declare? No, not this trip. Thank you. You're welcome. Danny! <laughs> How are you? It's fine. Oh, it's good to see you. How's this flight? Natalie! Oh, uh, Dad, this is my boss, Claire Hammond. Miss Hammond? Mr. Bundy, you've got a wonderful daughter. She is a crack salesman. Oh, thank you. Salesperson? <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, did anyone in Rio give... Did anybody in Rio what? Oh, nothing, nothing. It's not important now. Go home and have a good rest. I'll talk to you tomorrow about it. Okay. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Mr. Bunny. Mr. Bunny. Century Boulevard. You stay here, kid. Stepping out of your car? Why, officer? What have I done? Just do the ass, lady. Come on, come on. Oh, uh, that was not in my car before. Oh, I get it. It was a plan. Is it yours? It belongs to the company. Open it. No, you can't force me to do that. I know my rights. That case is locked, and you can't force me to open it without a warrant. Beautiful. Dummy. Search and seizure. Oh, no, ma'am. You see, we received word that your case contains illegal drugs. Under those circumstances, no warrant is required. Cosmetics. Perfume, soap. You got a bum tip, Cleaver. What? You got something else, too, Cleaver. And a wrap. You'll hear from my attorney. The girl's father's trying to double cross us, Claire. You get back here right away. Bundy girl's apartment. Pick her up and bring her to the beach house. 
I'll meet you there. Just don't make sense. Unless they were wise to us. Well, that factor is a zero probability, sir. That they knew we were making the switch? You're correct, sir. There is no way they could have known that. Then where's the cocaine? It has to be someplace, sir. And she must have brought it in. There is a 74% probability on that, sir. Aha. Uh -huh. Then we've got to get to her before they do. Yes, sir. drop this stuff off and then we'll go downtown. I'm sure Miss Hammond's been booked by now. And you can see how they use that sample case. Claire. And I forgot to give her her present. What present? From the Rio sales manager. A pair of shoes. What kind of shoes? The most unusual hand-tooled leather platform shoes you ever saw. Where are they now? In my bag. Do you want to see them? Oh, yes, I do. Aren't they pretty? Yeah, but it's what they look like inside that concerns me. Inside? What? Yeah, I don't know. We're going to find out. Oh. Classy, huh? Put the shoe back in the box. Now we're all four of us going for a drive. In your car. Move it. left it there. A couple of other guys showed up, and they all drove off together. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Pick that up, will you, kid? Your girlfriend, Claire Hammond. She'll tell us where they went. Yes, sir. But I doubt if Mrs. Hammond will volunteer the information. Yeah? Huh. Hey, kid. You got those figures stored away from her ledger in your memory bank? Oh, yes, sir. You ordered me to retain them. Come on, let's go. Yes, sir. Now, look. You either tell us where Natalie and her father were taken, or I'll tell Herb Conroy how you've been doctoring his books. That's right, lady. You've been cheating him out of a fortune. You are crazy. Am I? Tell her, kid. Tell her what, sir? About the figures. If it's, sir, that's coercion. I don't care what it is. Tell her. Excuse me, sir, but does this also come under the heading of flexibility? Ha <laughs> ha. Tell her. Tell her. In 1974, your figures showed a net operating loss of $72,000 for the Barbara Carlyle Corporation. That same year, however, the amount of $72,000 was deposited into your private account. In 1975, the figure was $56,000. Over the past four years, the total monies funneled into your account was $218,000. An independent audit will show that... You get the picture, lady? They're at Herb's Beach House in Malibu. Beautiful, beautiful workmanship. Wouldn't you say? All right, take our guests home. Home? Yes. You'd better go by way of the, uh, the canyon. But be careful, gentlemen. That's a very dangerous road. Conroy, let the girl go, please. Good day. Thank you for coming.
get around the back of the house. I'm gonna go in through the front. You be a hero. We'll cover you. For Mr. Bundy, sir. Boy, that was a dumb thing to do, kid. But thanks. My pleasure, sir. You hurt bad? No, just a flesh wound. Ah. Thanks again, kid. Come on, let's go. Sir, when Mrs. Hammond was kissing me, if you hadn't called a code two, what would have happened? Well, it's kind of complicated, kid. Uh, yes, sir, I sensed as much. Uh, perhaps I could see some films that would teach me. Films? Oh, forget it, kid. Uh, sometimes a little learning can be a dangerous thing. Oh. Uh, yes, sir. 